Oh, yes, indeed, folks. Enjoy the sounds of Daisuke. I can never pronounce his name correctly. Uh, Daisuke Ishiwatari's soundtrack to Guilty Gear, which is so damn good. Six Black Heavens yeah. guns. Oh, so good. Love it. I, I like guns and things. Yep. You know who else likes... Well, no, actually, I can't, you know, I can't actually connect that. That's not a segue, because um, I have no idea if he does actually like them. I have no evidence of that. Probably. Yeah, probably not. Challenger for Nurcio. Nurcio's really gonna hate me after this. He, he that, but made seven hundred and fifty dollars off of you. He made a mistake, and that was he shouldn't have mentioned that he hates this matchup. Because now I'm just gonna keep doing it. It's like stop it. Shouldn't have mentioned it. This is your punishment. This is your highest card, though, of that category. By the way, it doesn't actually get better than this. Also. For some reason, yeah, stats. There we go. It's like it's like zest again. Like no, no, it's stats. Okay, all right. Yes, he has to fight stats. Another like top Korean Protoss. Yes, it's gonna be pretty fantastic. It, I, I can say this: if Nochi beats stats as well, then you have to stop giving him Protosses. Yeah, I pretty much have to. I, we're gonna run out of Protoss very quickly at this point. All right, Defender's Landing will be the venue for this particular encounter. Who picks the maps, Total Biscuit? Is it the winner or the challenger? It's the winner. So, five map okay. rotation. Once you use the map, you can't use it again until they've all been done. Oh, interesting. Yep. Because so, this map is Zerg bullshit, by the way. Yep. Really? All right, you can tell me why in a moment as we look. <laughs> Nuchio's up to actually three wins, not two. There we go. Our current reigning king of the hill, ladies and gentlemen. In the blue trucks playing Zerg. Apparently on the map of Zerg. Bullshit. It's your next game. He's Nuchio. Versus his opponent. Here, have another Protoss. You said you hated this matchup. To the northeast position. Certainly not just another Protoss. In the red trunks, it's stats. Well... This is a very small map, which can make rush distances very short. So things like Ling or Roach all-ins or Ravager all-ins are very strong. Um, and because they're strong, the Protoss has to kind of really take that into account and play differently. Um, and then with the Zerg can just flip that around and play it totally normal. But then also, you'll notice Stats is building his wall-in kind of in this choke area where there's a cooling tower, destructible debris. Mm -hmm. But look at how far away that is from the Nexus. It's, so it, it allows, if a Zerg wants to, they can open up extremely cheesy and have some avenues to run Lings around. And then the Protoss has to build like several pylons and maybe a forge and wall in this area. And even despite all of that, um, you could still just run around it or you could Overlord drop into their base. Whereas other maps, Generally, Zerg doesn't have multiple entryways into a Nexus that is far away from the choke spot. So the map is pretty bullshit. <laughs> Good to know. And no doubt why Nurcio picked it. We haven't seen a huge amount of it this tournament, but I'm intrigued to see what he does here. You know, we've, we've seen he faced up against Superodos, and he has pretty much said, look, Baneling, Roach, Hydra, a little bit of Ravager, low on upgrades seems to work pretty damn well and the response of the protoss has been up to this point well one of them tried storm didn't really work one of them yeah. you know tried archons and immortals that didn't work either so what what does work what what do you do against that composition uh, a lot of what you saw um the protosses weren't too far off it we're gonna, this game's not gonna go very long, by the way. No. Nope. Basically, exactly what I just talked about. But, um, you know, it was a couple, it's really weird because with the Hydra Ling Baneling style, the game gets decided in a couple of pretty big interactions. So, it's how you defend, it's, it's how you hold it, um, and then, and then the game goes from there. If you lose yep. too many key units, if you're losing Archons and Immortals, if you're engaging too early, if you're not using Photon Overcharge, if you're not using a couple of force fields, you know, you don't see a lot of wins in that situation. Oh, and these lings are becoming pretty nightmarish. Yeah, I think 
<laughs> you're probably right. This is try. He's trying desperately to wall if he gets another building down. And good lord, yeah, this this map is rough for yeah. against Zerg. Good lord, this this is basically all you do. How do you yep. even stop this? Well, uh, stats stats went on the greedy side. So his response was, "This okay. map's bullshit. I'm going to be greedy." There's no mothership core except for just now one coming out. He's dead now, right? This oh is yeah, done. super dead. <laughs> That's it. Super dead. Wow. Uh, okay, cool, yeah. One of the best brothers of the world just got slapped around in four minutes by Zerglings, basically. They, the Oracle is up, uh, but... He, I don't know, he has the bullshit come on the Oracle, and... I mean, there weren't that many drones. There are drones being built now, but... Uh, good use of the stacking here, but that only works for so long with 12 probes killed. He's trying yeah. his best, and of course, knowing, all right, you've got air units. All right, I'm just gonna split up then. Pylon's gonna power that down. Oracle he, he doesn't have energy. He tried so hard, Total Biscuit, but in the end... It did not even matter. It didn't even matter. No, it didn't. That's all of your workers about to get slaughtered horribly. Boom. Four minutes, 30 yeah, seconds, $250. Enjoy. Protoss is such bullshit, though, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's, yeah, that's that's horrific. Uh, stats clearly, very very clearly did the wrong thing there. But you know, what is the right thing? Is there a right thing? What's the optimal thing that you do in that situation? Exactly. And and that's what makes that map so tough. Like, we look at that and we go, well, he should have seen this. Coming. But if the if the Zerg just opens completely normally, and you're doing like a three gateway wall in, in a forge or like several pylons, and then you find out that you're just way behind on a completely standard opening from the Zerg, then the same kind of thing just happens later. And it looks equally stupid. So you have to guess, you have to get lucky, or you play like pretty safe middle ground and hope the Zerg's not being too greedy. Um, and that's just what happens. Sometimes you have maps like that in the map pool. It feels frustrating and it kind of sucks, but that that is StarCraft, you can't. And I'll tell you what, of all the races to blame for balancing a map, it's usually Protoss that is the problem child if you have like too easy of a third base to take the protoss is going to be in god mode if you have too hard of a third base to take the protoss is like inept and completely stupid and if you do fun stuff like have you know wide open naturals and multiple entry points it's the protoss that's like i can't play on that you guys like, mm -hmm. oh. yeah well he has managed to equal the number of wins of innovation one more map that one Puts him more. right at the top of the table. One more. Okay. Protoss ain't, ain't doing the job. Terran, as we saw, didn't really manage to do the job either. So, thinking of throwing another matchup, he has repeatedly stated that he hates that. Uh, sorry, if you claim you hate all three matchups, I don't really have much of a choice as to what to give yeah. you. Well, also, while earning $300,000 or whatever it is he's won over the years, it's like, get yeah. out of here. And he's doing well. Doing well today, too. $1,000 for bit of hard work but some well played games and then four and a half minutes of that yeah that last game was super hard yeah hmm it's like how many how many dollars per second as we wait for our next opponent to get online well we could figure that one out so it was what four minutes 30 seconds he did right there sounds about right 200 so 270 seconds i mean he was earning just under a dollar a minute a dollar a second, sorry. I was like, dollar a minute? Wait, what? No. Just under a dollar a second. Not a bad ratio, really. <sighs> it As must be nice. Wistfully sigh. How many Warhammer figurines could you buy with that? The answer is about one and a <laughs> half. That shit's expensive. It is. The plastic crack, they call it. Indeed. If you'd like to comment on what's going on in the proceedings so far... How well Nurchio is doing, by all means, use the hashtag Shoutcraft. If you'd like to add some dad jokes to the mix, you are more than welcome to do so. <laughs> Take the responsibility away from me. I actually saw a funny video of two people. Just, they were like in a, it was like a filming, a YouTube video, and they were just sitting there with straight faces, launching dad jokes at each other until one of them broke. It was pretty bad. It's a great way to live i think i don't think there will ever be a time when dad jokes are not funny no no absolutely not well with well, all these foreigners beating koreans i gotta ask the obvious question why do the koreans suck so much more than foreigners you know what I, mean? I don't know man don't know what happened 
just terrible. I think, we're, you know, we're going to need to isolate Korea from the rest of the world because they yeah. can't compete anymore. Stop having those foreigners take their money. Yeah. It's been a pretty good performance up to this point, but it might be brought to a screeching ah. halt. His next opponent, if Protoss will not work, and if Terran will not work, that leaves us with only one option. You asked for this. If you're going to keep beating the other races, you can have the GSL finalist sue instead. Literally, the GSL finalist. That is his title. Yep. Because that's what he does. Uh, yes, like he... He earns a steady income. <laughs> that's He's that the, is the, the biggest king maker. In yes, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. I think it's a great way to look at it. I don't yeah. think he believes that, but honestly, you have to have <laughs> a a strength of will to be able to endure that many. Second he places. Says, I was about to say me, crushing yeah, yeah. losses, but he says, "Tell me, foreigner fans, I love you." And it's like, okay, I didn't even know he listened to that kind of music. That's crazy. <laughs> You're as cold as ice. You're willing to sacrifice your dignity, apparently, and the yeah. credibility of this stream. Ah, uh, cold as ice. <laughs> no. I'm trying to think of the lyrics to the big wheel in the sky, but I actually cannot recall them at all. No, don't be silly. Foreigners only if I only had one song, what are you talking about? Jukebox Hero 2, right? That was a good song. Nah, that's not real. Alright, we're ready to rock Fair and enough. roll. Fair enough. By the looks of it. Oh my god. I didn't even see that one! You're losing it. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if I wanna have it! <laughs> I don't think you do. We that just lost the caster. Jeffrey. Can we get back there? Get back in here. We have a match to run. You don't get to slack off. Who are we yelling at? Uh, Mr. Haas, whoever that is. One of the casters, I think. All right. Well, I'm kicking him out. We're going. All right. Let's go. All right. ZBZ, then. It's like, hey, I also hate this matchup. Tough. <laughs> Proxima Station will be the place to be. You are getting Sue for your sins. This is it. If you want to beat Innovation, this is the final boss. Yeah. This is the guy you have to defeat. Good I'm lord. I'm kind of... I'm a little bit worried because there's this possibility that Sue loses the GSL finals, goes home... And, and then, then loses, loses this. An online best of one oh. to Mario. You know, as I said, I think I admire Sue's commitment to StarCraft and his ability to constantly endure these second place finishes because in the history of StarCraft 2, there has been nobody that has suffered the Concurse worse than that. No. Like, no, no, that's the past Marine King level. It's dreadful. Five was ridiculous. Six now is like, I'm actually... Like, I was laughing at five, because it's, it, it is ridiculous. It was like, wow, that's crazy. But six, it's like, hang on. We're talking about a young man that's going to have, like, second place PTSD for the rest of his life. Like, that, every time this is going to come up, it's going to haunt him a yeah. lot. Yeah. It's kind, of, it's kind of scary, actually. Really, it was terrifying. To the northeast position, ladies and gentlemen, your reigning king of the hill, the best one today, just dispatching opponent after opponent in some pretty brutal fashion evidently has a grudge against protoss now must face the gsl finalist and perennial second place finisher in a zerg versus zerg it is nurcio versus his opponent in the blue trunks playing zerg it is sue imagine how crazy it would be and these numbers should be crunched too with how many shoutcrafts you've done and how many Koreans have played in the in the shoutcraft tournaments, for it to be Nurchio to have the the most wins of everyone, that would be pretty impressive.
Hell of a player. And there's no excuse to be made either, where it's like, well, they're all played on servers favorable to them. No. No, no they're not. not they're played on equal ground. Uh, Nurtio's played Koreans and non-Koreans. Yep. But the Koreans have also played against non-Koreans as well. So it's Absolutely, like, yeah. where's the excuse? We don't have one. No. Nurtio's success rate against everybody is just excellent you know you yeah. look at him he's by far in terms of a foreign player the most successful against korean players in this tournament and it's not even close in the meantime yeah. though sue has racked up quite a few wins in this tournament as well and he's not messing around and of course as we are well aware basically sue's the best zerg in the world right now oh he is i don't think he there's any question about that so yeah. look at the difference with the two this is our first zvz of the day zvz is become quite an interesting matchup a little bit more varied with the additions in legacy of the void less of what it used to be either the link bane link wars or roach versus roach smacking yeah. their heads against each other for all time and we already see this big divergence in builds we have a three base nurtio versus an early lair sue and that usually ends up being muta good map control of course threaten the mineral lines and force out some sack defenses um and we'll have to see what Nurtio is going to do. There's a few different routes. Like you said, it's a little bit more diversified these days. Typically, if you see an opening like Nurtio's, it's going to revolve around the Roach. Um, we see a lot of burrow movement as the game goes on. And then when the Mutas pop out, players these days are going towards Infestors, actually, not as mm. much Hydras. Yeah, like that a lot. There were some changes to the Infestor a while ago. I must attest to have lost track of that we still have the ability to cast while burrowed yeah it's powerful we don't see it that often you know what else we don't see often freaking nidus worm out of sue yeah. right off the bat there just going for what looks to be roach ling an aggressive attack yeah i can't remember the last time i saw that in a zerg versus zerg and look at the positioning here sue has an overlord just a couple of millimeters away from the vision of Nurcio. Perfect positioning right in the middle to strike at any of those three bases. And this might be equally as shitty of a game <laughs> as what we saw just moments ago because... It's entirely possible. Here it is. He is droning up. He oh, is that is not the right thing right to now. do he's, at all. He's got seven roaches coming out now, so that is... He sees it, by the way. Yes. He has to. He's even moved the spine crawler up. There. I mean, I don't think it makes much of a difference. There's four queens and a bunch of roaches coming out there are more roaches on the way you're right uh the spawning pool's in a really awkward exposed position so that's not great so but up there right they're just gonna keep coming out of that nidus economically though sue does have a drone deficit which in the long term in a mirror match doesn't matter a lot and she is looking for a surround bringing the drones off the line to try and do some damage excellent transfuse on the nidus can he get another one no he cannot nurture boring a spine wow. crawler right in the middle of the mix the queen's currently standing tall another transfuse coming down but nurture surrounding him from all sides and the spine in particular making a big difference but wow 12 drones kill he defeats it Economic damage to Nurcio significant, but maybe not significant enough. Like that, maybe needed to do a lot more. Um, pretty much. I mean, it, it's not a definitive. This is not a beyond get out moment. Where no, it's like no, it's we're not. out of here. But he's down a hatch, and with those queens surviving, that's a big deal. That's in Jax. He's up a lair. But he's not really capitalizing on a lair just yet. He's working like, he's on that speed, speed, yeah. Which means Nurtio's not going to have as much ability to chase down. He's not going to be able to be out on the map. But I don't know. I would have liked to see a Spire or something because I feel like that allows him to be like, I'll take my third and maybe my fourth of that. Yeah. But again, that's, that's you know, that's in control criticizing Sue on what he should do <laughs> in the DBZ. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm more doing the thing where it's like, this with is my we bird's pretend eye to understand view, this I think this might be a good idea. Yeah. It's a complex one. Look at Nurture's drone count. You know, he felt secure after that. It's like you can't follow that up. And one of the yeah. reasons he knew that is because he knew every queen in Christendom died in that attack. Which means there's no way that you've got the lava to follow that up quickly. Right. You can't do it. So the only thing that Sue really has going for him at the moment is that tech edge, which is about to, you know, kind of disappear. You know, Les about to finish. But that roach speed versus non speed roaches, even if. Nurture was immediately start going to start that. He'd still be a good minute and a minute behind. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, well, the window, exactly, like you said, a minute behind. So if he doesn't somehow capitalize on it in the next Yeah, he's got to do moments, it now. It's not going to do anything. And he's going. But, he's moving. Yeah, but but Roach Speed's not like... Well, okay, so he'll be able to get this fourth, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but that that's about great. it. If uh, he sees he it, there. Uh, the... Oh, oh no, no, yeah, they spotted it. There we go. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm yeah. actually surprised he didn't just attack that. He's leaving. Me too. That's weird. It would have been right. like two or three volleys, and he has roach speed, and he has to figure that that's yes. the faster run, but whatever. Yeah, and that's a problem, because that really was the only edge that he had there, and he has not made use of it, which is concerning, because Nurcio's economy is rolling forward quite nicely. Third is done for Sue. So he's playing catch-up there, but... Now we're in a situation where Nurcio is going to have equal upgrades to Sue. He's going to have that speed. But when it comes to Roach Wars, the defender's advantage matters quite a bit. Yeah. So, I th and I think Sue might understand that, and that might be why he's saying, okay, I'm just going gonna, gonna to stay at home. You come to me, and I'll be okay, even if I maybe I had a weaker economy. I've got the defender's advantage. And they're equal upgrades, but only for now. There's actually a second evo chamber pumping up that upgrade juice for um sue so yep. that'll help it's a it's a pretty big deal it's not it's not like some of the other matchups where it's like if you have a two upgrade advantage it's this gigantic momentum swing where it's mm -hmm. not even funny but it does obviously factor in it's impossible to, to say with a straight face that it doesn't matter no no yeah and it's this is tricky for sue because of course you know losing those queens just had several minutes of effect really on lava generation you've got nocho who's producing yeah. lots of lava and sue who is not so that's why you have this big difference in supply here i'm a little bit weirded out too by sue early on scouting the gold base and then settling and then for choosing the not to normal. attack it He's yeah. just like you know what i want to be behind economically we'll see what mm. happens it's like, oh. yeah it's a bit strange all ravages at the front here comes the engagement immediately the corrosive bile's going off a Decent shot there for Sue. Nurcio runs right into the concave, but bear in mind, Sue does have that armor upgrade over Nurcio, but I think the numbers game might just be a little bit too much. Sue continuing to bring in reinforcements. He's got a good defensive line, landing yet more. Excellent corrosive Biles, and Sue actually holds the line on the right flank. The left flank just so barely, but Sue actually takes the fight. The Queens come to back this up. More reinforcements coming in from Nurcio, though. Will that economically just be too much? And Nurcio's been oh. slowly driven back. Oh, no, I think Sue might have run into a bit of a trap. Nurcio turning around, getting that concave. But I think the armor actually did the trick. Yeah, comes away from it with his life, which is more than I thought was going to happen. There's still Given more Nurcio, though. The supply was, but the economy is just so good for Nurcio. Yep. And he's just, just chucking units over here. Yep, plus two is about to kick in for both players. That armor upgrade is going to be now less useful, but he held on. He defended that well as efficiently as he could. If he can just take one more fight like that, he's right back in this game. But you look again at the army supply. Nurcio has the obvious advantage here. There is no doubt. Sue has got to take an excellent engagement. Goes in again. Another good set of Ravager shots. Excellent Ravager shots here for Sue, but not for Nurcio. Is that going to be enough? Nurcio doesn't think so. Nurcio's going for it. He thinks he has the numbers advantage, which he does. But the better fight is for Sue. But I just don't quite think he has enough. There, Just the math is in the... God, it's in the favor of Nurcio. He fought so hard there. He took such a great fight, but look at that. 103 army supply to 27. That is not happening. Heartbreaking for Sue to lose this after what happened tonight. But the reality of it, Nurcio just outplayed him. He held that Nidus attack brilliantly. And that just put yeah. Sue too far behind. He waited a long time. He ended up pulling his drones, but decisively with his triple prong attack against the Nidus Worm. So all the little things that it takes to hold off an all-in, because the game basically gets decided on those little decisions, he did correctly. And he's playing really well. He beat what everyone would consider the best Protoss. He beat what everyone would consider the best Zerg. Uh, and I guess, you know, Gumiho's probably drunk and lying in his own... Yes bodily waste right now as he should so there's <laughs> no way for him to be fed to Nurcio but let's just go ahead and say it Nurcio would probably demolish Gumio and we should call him the GSL champion at this point 
looking at this caliber of play. I <laughs> just don't yeah. know anymore. Good God. This guy is a maniac. This guy what is a way to do it, by the way. That that win makes him the number one most it winning does. Shoutcraft Kings player. It absolutely does. And he beats Sue on the night that Sue lost the GSL finals. That's going to sting. <laughs> That's got to sting. I, I think Sue's attitude is, well, second place is still good money. I'm making regular yeah. checks. And considering how often he gets to those finals, he's making more regular checks than anybody else. You know? He's doing just fine. That, I mean, that's for sure. It's a living. But geez. Pfft, I can't imagine. Well, well. What an impressive performance from Nurcio up to this point. Excellent. Excellent performance. We only have a couple of players left at this point. And I'm looking at that list, I'm like, nope. I don't know who who can pull this off. These players are good, but then he just slapped about players that are just as good as that. What on earth do we do? Whoa. Excellent. Incredible. I'll give kudos to him for that. Man, this tournament really got going once Nurcio got into it. Yeah. All right. His next opponent. So all three matchups apparently don't work. All right. Cool. I'm just throwing caution to the wind at this point. Just put them in a line. Put them on a conveyor belt. Feed them to Nurcio. Give him all the money. That is yeah. my plan. In this case, I'm going to give him all the money. Oh my god. <laughs> You deserve Even it. Even for you. Ah, <laughs> oh, former Dust Gaming's bunny. Ready to rock and roll. At least I assume that is the right bunny. I can never I can never tell. There's two bunnies. I know. There's like Why five the of them these days. Uh, they're multiplying this like rabbits. This is the one that had the TLO game, though, where he was doing like in-base Marauder. Yes, TV. that ridiculous thing. Yeah. Oh no, it was, it was straight marines is what it was. It was yeah. a four or five barracks marine. Yep. That's all it was. That was one of the most weird games I've ever seen. I kind of hope for another silly game like that, honestly, considering what's going to go. It's not like a good game is going to beat Nurcio. Like, you got to be, yeah. uh, you got to do more than that. <laughs> it's like, good StarCraft? No. No. Weird <laughs> StarCraft. That's the way to go. Oh, Lord. The Northwest position, our reigning king of the hill. And currently, the highest ranked player in Shoutcraft King's history. In the Red Trunks, playing Zerg, Euronix Nurcio. Versus his opponent to the southeast position in the Blue Trunks, playing Terran. We're feeding him a bunny. So what's his street? Is it four now? Or five? It's five. Today. The record's still like 11 though, right? So he's a ways away from that yeah gotta be it's the i think yeah the streak the biggest streak was innovations i think it was 10 so yeah he's okay. he's a bit away from that but he's certainly getting there and if he finishes off the last couple of players he could go on to next month and yeah clean him out he can be he can be the new king of kings just never lose again Yep. It's never gonna happen. This is just his job now. We basically just put him on salary at this point. <laughs> Might as well. Well, Bunny. We'll see what he can do. It's going to be a challenging matchup, certainly, considering the quality of Nurture's play up to this point. That said, you know, he has been tested in Zerg versus Terran, but only against you, Thermal. So, give it another shot. See what Bunny can do. Like, Bunny is not, uh, you know, he's not the best Terran in the world. He's still a very good Terran. Yeah. <laughs> I was... Ringing endorsement. 
my keyboard's doing this weird thing where if I hit a key, it's doing a random computer process. I was like, I was trying to hit D to open up the nameplates, and it just all tapped me, so I don't know. That, that, well, that is a little bit weird. That would be highly distracting, yeah. I might have been dad joked to death. But... Possibly, yes. The computer That's just okay. gave up on it entirely. The mouse still works. I can look around at the mouse. Yeah. Um, a second barracks? Yeah. See, when you said he's not the best player in the world, like the, the words he is a that weird one, find, though, isn't he? He's a very weird one. Yeah. He tries some really interesting stuff, which is why I enjoy watching him a great deal. It's like he, yeah. okay, you might not win all your matches, but holy hell am I entertained when I watch them. This might be really fast 16 Marine drop. Possibly. What is that? Is that a tech lab? Yeah, okay. Okay, maybe not. Hmm. Well, it still could be. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows this Show build this order. Artwork. Do it. Yep. There it is. It is. Okay, oh my. so that's what it is. But I'm, I'm trying to look. I'm looking at this map. and I guess the third is kind of far away from the natural. Not really far away. That's not the best way to describe it, but it's definitely isolated. It's not like a close third where you could just go down a ramp and down another one and then you're there. Yeah. So he's going to try to isolate it, and if he can kill a couple of creep tumors, there's not really going to be great reinforcements. That's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, I love it. I'm interested. Uh, very interested. And we've seen standard builds from the best players in the world just fail against Nurcio. So maybe what is needed is something, is a fresh take. Or you could then, lose yeah. a bunch of SCVs to a raw ling run by. That, that would kind of suck as well. But... Was, I think Nurchio is probably looking at the number of Marines now and saying, what yeah. on earth are you doing? Why do you have well, that many? Yes to most what you said. I think he knows. Uh, this this build has been done. It, it is it's a part, It was actually a predominant part of the meta. Usually they did things like they'd get out a Widow Mine or two yeah. and actually incorporate that in the drop as well. Mm -hmm. Bunny's just going straight Marine. Yeah. Like, and he's really early 16, stem. no problem. I mean, this... If not, if he didn't just throw a Cyclone into the mix, which makes me scratch my head a little bit, this would be like, this is a Wings of Liberty build at this point, you know? Just get 16 yeah. Marines, get the quickest stim you can, and just go. And you know what? I mean, in the current state of what Nurcio has, that could very well work. No Baneling Nest, Whoa. Roaches, and losing those Lings for no real reason. Yeah. This is... That's unlike him. Yeah. Roaches, it's like, oh, well, Roaches are great. Well, yeah, but against 21 Medivac Marines with Stim, this early on, no, they're really not. That's the problem. They they don't kill Marines that well. They almost kill them, and then because they shoot so slowly, the Medivacs heal the Marine up again. So, yep. no, Roaches are not ideal here at all. This is actually very concerning. And he's droning! He's He knew there were 16 Marines here, and he's droning. Yeah. It's almost like... I don't believe you will do this. Well, he's doing it, and you're in trouble. He didn't Still send probably all... too many roaches for him to deal yeah, with, but he's right now. just going to be able to bounce around forever, though. Yeah. Like, what's going to stop him? There's three queens. That's it. No spore. Certainly no infestors or anything like that. Interesting to see the double upgrades coming in from Nurcio, though. You know, that is a good idea, considering that Bunny has only just started the double engineering bay. If you can get 1-1 one, one out pretty quickly... Assuming he doesn't die to this horrible thing, good lord, look at the size of it, then that should work out pretty well. But I think Nocho's a little confused. And I don't really yeah. blame him right now. He's got what he needs to beat all of this coming, but it's not here yet. And look at the DPS of that thing, especially with the Cyclone in there for good measure. Wow. Queen support coming. It's not enough. There's too many bullets. Bunny, will it be? It's going to be Bunny? That dethrones Nurcio after all of this, perhaps? It's possible. He keeps going. This is going to get cleaned up, but after a lot of damage, and some of it's even going to get out. He splits in two. Cyclone towards yeah. the back. Over towards the third base with those Marines. Wow. Maybe if he lost, like, the Medivacs, I'd feel a little bit better about this. Yeah. The Roaches are also There's not... There's only one Queen. Can't happen. Yeah, they're not meant to be mega tradable units. Like, they get to a stage where they trade, but they're supposed to kind of hold the fort down until the Zerg is very comfortable economically and then start to trade out. This was not ideal. It's three bases against just the two of Bunny, so that's what he's got yeah. kind of going for him. But otherwise, and I mean, as I say that, the third's being taken. Yeah. 
third third going up there. I, what I would have liked to see from that attack is more economic damage. Killing the queens, excellent. That's really holding Nurchio back, but I wanted to see dead drones. Because yeah. he's, he's still on 69 drones. So, okay, you lost a bunch of stuff, but he's just going to build it again. So, you need to do something a little bit more than that. He's fixing to. He's going to go ahead and start fighting back some of this creep. Now is not the time to attack. He's up against 1 1 now with uh, no upgrades at all. So, he needs to quickly back off. Wait for his own upgrades, upgrades, I think. God, that look at that hive. Very quick hive from Nurchio. Straight to Ultras, you think, again? Eventually, yeah. I think he'll use the hive to get, like, adrenaline, just chuck out the Zerglings and Roaches to stabilize, and then get to Ultras. Using a that tank. would be my guess. Tank to support here, and then quick pick up and go. It's like, why not? You know, there's, there's no Hydra Den, and the Queen count is insignificant. Like, there's no yeah. reason for Bunny to ever lose a bunch of units. But Infestors are being added into the mix here by Nurture. Okay. Realizing this mobility is a real problem. It's one and or two good fungals. That would be it. Bunny's staying out on the map. The mark of a good Terran. Very alive-esque from earlier today. The yep. way we started. I like, the, I like the adding of the tanks, by the way. You, you do this if you see roaches, but it's just... It's also a nice way to anchor a third, and a lot of, a lot of yeah. these maps, the fourth is close to the third, so it's a good way to connect your defenses that way as well. Yep, yeah, it's looking good. I just want to see some more damage done by Bunny. You know, it looked like a great start, but, you know, it's, there's not really been a great follow-up yet, and uh, with those Infestors, yeah, nothing worse than a Fungal combined with those Corrosive Biles. That is a lot of dead stuff. Ultra's on the way as well. We are seeing at least tanks being added in and a small yeah. drip of Marauder. So it's like Bunny knows what Nurchio is going to do. The question is, will he be able to deal oh. with it? That's a big army. Oh, Fungal, not so good. Only hits a few, but big splash on the side and Nurchio flanks around the side, collapsing in on the army. The tanks still stand tall. Needs to get some corrosive bile on that. The tanks are still firing. Finally... Finally, they will fall, but not before reinforcements come in and drive this army back. And the infestors are gone. No fungals. Dodges out of the way. The corrosive mm. biles. There's a split. There's almost one medevac for each infantry unit at the moment, and that's proving to be deadly against the roaches. Yeah, they're just going to go ahead and cut through this. You can see the supply closing, but slightly in favor of our Terran player. Very what efficient, I do like though. for Nurtio is he's still up to four bases, so he's maintaining that little economic lead that you should against Terran. But what I don't like is how these tanks are creeping up, and as you point yep. out, so many medevacs. Yeah, and once 2-2 two, two kicks in, this is going to be a big, big problem that these guys are going to hit really hard. And like you said, with a Roach-heavy army, without Infestors, and he's not, built, he's not rebuilt any, by the way, that's a bit of a problem. However, the Ultras time bomb is ticking away. Kindness playing on yeah. the way. Few Ultras about to pop out. A Marine Heavy Army will not fight that. There's only two tanks. If he'd managed to maintain his tank count and build it up a bit more. There are some Liberators on the way out. Again, Bunny knows. But it's like, oh, I want to pressure, I want to pressure. But really, all Bunny's killed is army, not bases. Not yeah. drones. And that'll catch up to you. Yeah, it will. And there are the Ultras. I'm like, oh, I can't fight that now. Damn. Uh, but I can do this, you know, which, is, which is certainly annoying. But you see the Ultralisks are just being tickled at the moment. Whole army shows up there, actually. And, well, you can tell uh, how bad of shape Bunny's in in terms of dealing with Ultralisks when the entire army, except for, like, an Ultralisk, a Ling, and a Queen, shows up to the top end of the map. Yeah. But a, I think it was, like, a triple drop had to back away because they're just like, oh, Ultralisk, I can't yep. deal with that right now. Yeah. And I think at this stage of the game, in Zerg versus Terran, you see the Terran back off and start to play defensively which can trigger the zerg to just take the rest of the map say all right cool you you i've got drop defense i know you've got to keep your army together especially since you're building liberators so you have to fight in one place so i can have everything now i can't believe we're here it felt like not too long ago i was ready to call nurchio down and out he took a, he took a pounding early on. It was aggressive start from Bunny, but it's like yeah. he didn't actually kill that much of value other than Queens, which is fine, but, you know, need to see a drone line dead. But also, as you were saying, uh, in, in concept at least, if you're killing Queens and Roaches, that's nice. 
Um, but he's also killing your stuff too, so it's not like you go back home and you have this doomsday army that can't be stopped and you just kill his roaches. It's just like resetting the two of them, and, and that's where we are now. Oh my god, that fungal absolutely decimating a huge number of marines, but Bunny's still fighting. These liberators remaining untouched, like no ravagers to pick them off. The liberators go to town, and suddenly Nurcio's in serious trouble. He is. Can he muster the force? A couple of ravagers circling around. Even a mule? Is that a mana mule? I, I think it I, might I, be. I think it's a repair mule, personally. But although it's not repairing, so I think it is a mana mule. Where not are the repairing. corruptors? Where are the corruptors in this? Like, that, they weren't there. And the liberators reign supreme here. Oh, the corruptors wow. finally coming in, but that doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter now. He did it! He actually did it! The king is dead! <laughs> Eaten alive by Bunny! Like so many before him. The absolute... A good run for Nurcio, though, and congratulations on becoming the most winning Shoutcraft player. That's <laughs> definitely an awesome accolade. It is. Yeah. It reminds me of a scene in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's like... It's got huge pointy teeth. Look at the boards. It's Bitch. a rabbit. Big ears. Oh, a nasty big pointy teeth. All uh, right, rabbit stew coming up. Indeed. <laughs> well, Nurcio falls finally to Bunny. By the way, a man who wasn't even supposed to be in this tournament, who we had to bring in as a replacement as somebody didn't show up. Oh, yeah. my. Well, that was a thing. Not bad. I don't understand. <laughs> Nothing is real. Nothing else matters anymore, apparently. All that is real is the bunny. Indeed. Now, I'm looking at my list, and this was only like, this is the last map. I'm like, how is that possible? We had 21 players. We have two left. We always, in, we always have 21 players, which makes 20 maps, right? Yes. We, yes. That's... Yeah, that's right. But you know what? Don't fight it, John. No. Let the numbers just decide for us, you know? I think so. We'll have another map and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm almost certain we are not on map to, uh, map 20. Almost certain. But I'm going to have to go and look at it. I don't I don't track these things. I'm too busy producing the tournament. Okay, we're, we're going to jump over to the career server. Bunny has been reigning king before. He was one of the only two to go into the next month and immediately lose. Can that happen again? Could it be the first two-time immediately losing king after reigning over the course of a month? That's an accolade you don't want, is it? No, that one's not as good. Oh, my. Well, we're moving over. We've got at least one more map. Probably two. It is, yeah, it is two. I knew I was bloody right. <laughs> ah, people keep telling me, this is the last one. It's like, no, I've got two more players. Assuming the other one shows up. In which case, if he doesn't, uh, I guess you're fighting him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Free money. Oh, uh, dear. Okay. The next player. It's getting a little bit late over there in Korea, but we did have one person specifically say, hey, uh, I'd like a late group because I don't have to qualify for the GSL, which somewhat narrows it down, I have to say. The silence is deafening. We're just waiting for that person to show up. I'm, I'm currently arguing with Olivia. It's like, no, this is map 19. Honestly. <laughs> it's like, stop. Oh, dear. I just, 
I'm, I'm just still trying to get over the fact that Bunny was the one to throw Nurchio. After all of that. Bunny's good. He's just funny. He just does weird stuff. That game was not weird, though. It just looked weird at first, but... Just did an older build, basically. It's not what people are doing right now. That's part of why it works. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, it's it, it was sort of before we even started the game, the one thing we said is like, look, something unconventional is going to happen. Like, that that's what's going to throw Nurchio off. You throw conventional at him, he is more than prepared to deal with it. Yeah. You throw something like that off, and, it, and it's weird because... Like, that didn't kill him early game. We said, hey, yeah, it's cool that he got aggressive and that Nurture was caught a bit off guard, but it's not like Nurture lost a base or anything. No. No, you're not wrong. The damage... I think the, the small thing that you touched on in the game was just that the Queens died. So a yeah. couple of cycles of production did go down that way. And while Roaches are not like... Uh, like we were saying, they're trade-out units, but the kind of big deal there was he lost enough and he lost his queens, that he was in a bit of a weird spot. Yeah. It's, it's got to be that, right? It's it's sort of like ripples in the water. It yeah. wasn't a big deal initially. It became a bigger deal. It threw everything off. You still saw him go for that early hive like nothing had happened, you know? Like, yeah. you, like you would do in his regular build if that had gone un uninterrupted. And as it turns out, if you try that, you may very well not have the means. You don't have what you need to deal with it. And I think there was that crucial mistake right at the end. He knew about the Liberators. He had the Corruptors. They weren't in the fight. He had seven yeah. Corruptors. That whole thing, the Liberators are just sitting there, just blowing everything away. He didn't have the Ravagers to corrosive bile them. So he had a couple of different possibilities of ways to deal with the Liberators and then didn't. That's, yeah. I guess, the only thing I can say. Well, we have our next player. Let's rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what a challenger. Hey, if, if Bunny can stand up to somebody this good, then he should earn the respect of everybody watching, and rightfully so. As he surprisingly dethrones Nurchio. If he was expecting an easy ride, he's not going to get it. This guy doesn't need to qualify for GSL because he already has. It's classic. <laughs> Nasty. Classic is, uh, I, I like to think of him as kind of a high, high a slightly higher tier patience. Very big on the execution, just has these rock solid builds. Very micro oriented. Uh, but just a little bit sharper in pretty much all the categories in the patience, so. We'll see. Here we go. The countdown has now begun. Classic versus Bunny. On paper, a mismatch? I, that shouldn't matter after what we just saw there. Because Bunny is a little bit unconventional. Yeah, it's best of one. Um, I know it's it sounds silly, but um, a competent player can beat a much, much better player in a best of one. A lot of things can happen. Sir. Yep. That he can. That he absolutely can. And it, it almost feels unfair to sort of, you know, discount Bunny. It's like he's a great player, but you look at accomplished players like, this guy's won a GSL, this guy's won an SSL, this guy's been in the round of four for God knows how long. He's won this tournament, that tournament, $300,000. And then, you know, Bunny is not really on the list of people alongside that. But you can't right. forget that in order to be a pro StarCraft player in South Korea, you have to be good enough to beat all of these people. Yep. You may not do it all the time, but nobody ever does. Yeah. Here we go, folks. Our current king of the hill! After pulling off a pretty phenomenal upset. Doing what everybody else could not to the southeast position in the blue trunks playing Terran. It is Bunny. Versus his opponent in the northwest position in the red trunks playing Protoss, the mighty classic. Chin toss. Indeed, he has a prolific chin. That was how I would consider it. If we were caught in a zombie apocalypse and the only weapon available was a chin, classic would be the one I'd want to be with. 
my survival chances are highest if I was with him. Oh, without question. Indeed. It's a mighty, mighty chin. A sign of virility in some cultures, I'm told. Really? The chin? The chin, absolutely. Just big chin. Okay. Yep. Sign of virility. Everyone knows. Well, this is already getting a little bit weird, because that is like, oh, I'm going to block. I, I never under quite understood trying to block a Terran. It's like, you realize we can move those things, right? So, all right, I'll build it one step to the right, then. I can't, I mean, the reason they do it is we've all seen that time where they then put it in the slightly wrong spot. Um, but to the most, I, I get what you're getting at. It, it, it can't be displaced because it can move around. But well, yeah, of course, yeah. It sometimes forces errors. It's just a 25 mineral thing. So. Yeah. Just a little annoying. And you never know when that can weirdly turn into something else. It's like, oh, that pylon is just a block. Oh, there's now three cannons here, or a proxy something. Or there's a mothership core, and now you're shooting at my stuff. Yep. In the meantime, this is a block that is annoying as hell. Engineering bay block here from Bunny to prevent the expansion. It's irritating. It's oh, yeah. really annoying. It's a damn tough building. It's infuriating. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to endure about two minutes of hearing that damn mothership core shooting sound on loop, which in itself gives a psychological edge to your opponent. It just, it's meant to throw them off their game plan. Yep. And then it kind of couples down with things like, well, I also spent money on an impromptu pylon block that I then canceled. And now your money's a little bit out of place. So we'll have to see. Classic is going with a fast... Uh, well, yeah, it's a pretty fast white count. It should just be Blink. Could be Dark Dark Templar, uh, but I'm just guessing Blink. I think Classic typically keeps it pretty close, but there is that yeah. Oracle showing up. <laughs> that was getting a lot done just yet. That that Widowmine, I'm actually surprised that Widowmine didn't go off. It was clearly in range. Oh, Classic obviously got out just the right moment. That would have hurt a lot. Yes. Gets out, hasn't done any damage yet. Bunny aware of it. Bunny, of course, marine heavy player has already got lots of guns on the ground. That will help. And there's now a Viking. So, but he gets something. He gets a SCV with it. Yeah, a little less than he wanted. Four. Is it gonna? Yeah, a little bit of scout here. Maybe an SCV or two. Nope, just the one. Nope, yep. not even the one. Excuse me. Nope. Um, like in the position of that widow mine, using the satellite dish to hide the imprint of it this time. Really cool move. Yeah. Classic didn't fall for it, though. Driven away. Just just a little damage here and there with the Oracle. It's going to be interesting to see is how well this blink works here. They're on the Korean server. Classic's got some of the best control in the world. You're up against... At the moment, Raw Marines. There's no sign of Stim yet. He's about, it looks like he's about to start Stim. So Blink Stalker is going to be dangerous for a good minute, at least. Yeah, and on this map, too, there's one of the things they talk about, especially with that Stargate opening, is you can actually bounce up into the main off of the third. From the third, you can harass the natural. So there's a lot of kind of connectivity in terms of a mobile force harassing between that. We'll have to see, though, because Bunny's going to have the initiative. Like, his starport is about to finish. He's already got a ton of Marines, as you pointed uh, out there. And with three barracks, he might be the one that's like, no, 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 you shouldn't worry about blinking into my base because I'm actually all over you right now. Nurgio with the tweet there saying last fight was bad performance by me but still great event, thank you. So, But thank you to, nice. to you, Nurgio. You're like we we love watching you play. It's, it's excellent. Yep. It's always great and very much earning his money, earning his pay today. I just want, I want to watch Nurgio fight Koreans forever. Yeah. We almost did. Yeah. Has, has he ever lived in South Korea? Did he ever go there? I can't recall. I don't think he did. I did do he? Not believe maybe so. once. Uh, maybe. I think he did for one event, and I think he did. He did win at least a series in it. But no, I don't think he's shown any real desire. Like you said before, it's a it's a tough tough thing to ask of somebody to go to somewhere like that, very alien place. Here comes the stalker. It sees a huge group of units coming his way. It's like, all right. Gotta get ready to fight. Only seven Blink Stalkers now. 
eight now and 25 marines stim is about to be done oracle comes in spots it says all right i see what's coming the rush distance is pretty long on this map so at least he's got a bit of time to prepare now of course he has sentries in the mix as well and he, the the sentries are almost well no he's had, actually had a good base good trap oh! there jumps forward on top of them gets the meta back immediately and then with that guardian shield is able to chop through the marines that's a huge win right there but at the natural a good drop over here doing some damage yep doing some damage certainly but unfortunately uh, you know he wasn't focusing on it. he wasn't microing correctly so all they did was shoot the assimilator not the drone line L but what gets me is the precision of classic with that blinking in a just about one unit away from the range of the widow mines because that was a disaster waiting to happen if he'd gone just a little further those two widow mines would have gone right into the middle of that army and decimated it but trades out well both armies taking significant losses yeah and hilariously they kind of even out in supply yep um, now they do almost the i mean scv to pr or, uh, probe kill is fairly similar the army losses for Bunny seemed like a lot more, but there was also a decent amount of classes, or Classics Army, excuse me, that did go down as well. Yeah, and I think when, you, when you're thinking about Classics Army, you're talking about Sentry Stalker versus losing Marines. Like, yeah. one of those is gas heavy, the other ain't. And Bunny looks like he's in decent spot right now. Third is still established for Classic though, and it's only just finished up for Bunny. Here comes the drop or the attempt at it. He's actually going all the way around the outside. He's going for the main here still dropping but the stalkers are out of position they're halfway across the map this could do some serious damage Ooh. on both sides oh god there's widow mines as well yeah oh jesus right that widow mine is locked down he could kill some key infrastructure here six probes killed i'd love to see him take out those pylons that's what he's gonna do oh. he's gonna shut down all the warp gates a couple of artosis pylons and now there's no production at all he's actually he can't try to remake it oh man side but this is against a terran player who's already rallying out more units it's gonna be widow mines i i don't know I main nexus is down you know, less than 10 minutes into the game classics all in i think at this point he has to yeah. win and oh there's the quick blink out he gets out of it he's got to win right now he does he has no production he can't follow it up he's got nothing to defend the main base he can't go back and if he actually does wait where's his mothership call it's it's in the oh god it's in the natural this is a disaster for classic yeah. that drop was exceptional 13 kills on the two widow mines at that third as well that insult injury that was a serious hit classics finally bringing some units back and that oracle just went pop God, God, I mean, you dropped a revelation. I was like, great. Now you know that this stuff is killing your base. You already knew this. In come the adepts. It's, it's not enough. It's not enough firepower. Buddy's army. Oh, listen, the specialist drop force is killing everything. The main is gone. Yeah, the army has to come all the way back to stop a single drop. Total Biscuit That's from doing more damage. Astonishing. Like, yeah, perfect timing there by Bunny knowing his opponent sent everything out not and didn't send the mothership call with it and now bunny's in a brilliant position classic is in serious trouble where do you even come back from here like it's it's like he can he's trying to get his warp gates back up he's trying to reestablish some degree of infrastructure well he's trying to get he's getting his single attack upgrade but even that is behind the upgrades of the terran player so the Terran player is sitting on one one right now. Oh man! I mean, it, every way you cut it, I don't, I don't want to even break the sound. And bad like, news. Here's where he's losing. Here's where he's losing. I love what Bunny's doing right here. He's putting, he's building missile turrets along with widow mines around the edge of the map so that nothing could sneak in, like what prism drop or an oracle. He's securing himself against any kind of Prodos comeback nonsense, and then yeah. he's just going to take a straight up fight, and that's a fight he should not lose. I don't see how. Especially no, especially not when he does that. Army. God, takes a sentry for free, takes an adept, repositioning here. Oh, God, that is a horrible place to fight if you're classic. There's oh. no way. There's too no. much. Widow mine no. detonation. GG. Killer no, rabbit that... is on a rampage. I mean, that was him getting caught, realizing he's so far behind. He, I mean, please, no one at home think that for any period of time at all stats thought that that was the way to go about that no no that final engagement he was just like all right i'm dead
Yeah, just, like, yeah, he realized it. I mean, you lose your whole main to two dropships worth of stuff. What else is there? Not much. Not much. Good lord. I'm impressed. That that would that didn't even look close. No, and Bunny looks good, by the way, too. It's not even that like Classic made this huge boneheaded decision. It's just that Bunny looked phenomenal, really fast, really crisp. Yeah, he did. That was great. That was really good. Impressive. I told you, if Bunny's able to pull that off, then everybody should respect him for that, and rightfully so. It's like I don't like I don't. I feel like I'm talking down on Bunny, which feels wrong. It's, it's just when you compare somebody like Bunny to people like Classic who did so damn well that they didn't even have to qualify for the GSL because they yeah. did well enough to not have to. Just an invite, and then you see Bunny manage to pull that off on him. I, I'm, I'm super impressed, you know? That's yeah. really, really good. Well done to him for that. Excellent play. We have one final map, ladies and gentlemen. It's one final opportunity for you to get your tweets in via hashtag Shoutcraft. Got some good stuff. We'll show it on the screen. Any rabbit puns you have available, we'll take them. Take any rabbit puns yeah. you can get. I was thinking about... Um, let's see if I can even escape. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Uh, I was thinking about pulling out of hat puns. Mm -hmm. How That's do you fair. pull that out? Yeah, we could do that. Anything about breeding like rabbits, that works. Yeah. Anything Monty Python good. related is welcome regardless of the circumstances, whether or not it has anything to do with rabbits. Yeah, those are all those are all top shelf rabbits. They're all good. Sure. They're all good. So we are on our final map, folks. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. The three month break. Always nice to see so many of you coming out and supporting the tournament once again. Quite a few people have asked, like, hey, you know, can we donate to the prize pool? Because, you know, lost sponsor. It's, unfortunately, anyone that sort of understands how taxes work and how S-Corps work and stuff like that, donations for a prize pool would be a nightmare of tax <laughs> liability. So I, what, what I would like to do, um, honestly, is this is something that twitch has already said they want to do for certain tournaments in fact they announced it and specifically said in their blog that the reason they're doing it is because we used to do it back with the original shoutcraft invitationals which is have yeah uh bits tip jars for players implemented yeah. directly in uh obviously for kings it would be a bit tricky because we have so many people but you know i think what would be cool is if there was like one centralized tip jar that could then be automatically distributed that's a great idea i think it'll be awesome i actually uh, can I, I'll even take it another step further. I think we should have tip jars for players, but it just secretly goes to you and I, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think embezzlement yeah. is the way to go. I would recommend that to anybody. Great business practice. Absolutely. I don't, mean, if you don't, don't get do caught. That. True enough. White collar crime. The best kind of crime. Ah. <laughs> well, we're going to have one final matchup. It's going to be pretty cool. I invited this player because of a recent performance of his that was super impressive. I've always been a fan of him. I love watching him play. He's like one of the fastest foreign Terran that I think I've ever seen. Like yeah. when he goes up to full speed, when you see his micro, it's like, how does a human do this? It's a master. That it absolutely is. It's Marsa, ladies and gentlemen, the Canadian Terran player is our final invite and invited him because he, he did so well in the DreamHack Valencia North America qualifier. Came in first place, won WCS circuit points, beat Scarlet handily, you know, beat True, beat Jon Snow, beat Neeb 3-0. Just want to just point that out. That was, And that wasn't He's very long ago. Yeah, he is. He really is. Yeah, he's a monster. Um, I can't remember what term it was last year. Well, he ha he took top four in two terms in a row, and I think it was France and Austin, uh, DreamHack Austin. And, and then I think he went to Home Story Cup, and it's just he just was very impressive for a few tournaments there. 
demolishing some really good players. Yeah, it's like he he has one events. It's just like they're they're relatively small. Uh, the the best result he's technically had was 2016 WCS Spring Championships. Uh, got knocked out in third place by Showtime. Still walked away with ten grand. Can't complain. But as I I feel like at just at some point there will be this breakout major performance. It's a shame he didn't get to go to Yon Shopping, but of course he's qualified for Valencia, so maybe that will be it. Maybe that will be his time to shine. Yeah. That would be awesome. But love watching him play. I remember casting him back in uh, Shoutcraft America Winter, which he didn't win. He uh, he lost to Huck, but he came in second place in the finals. It was a pretty cool final. So hoping for that breakout performance, but here we go. This is the final map, ladies and gentlemen. It's the northeast position in the blue trunks playing Terran. It is Marsa representing Canada versus his opponent, the unlikeliest king of the hill, perhaps, to the southwest position in the red trunks playing Terran. It's Bunny. Masa is also a bit of a TBT sniper, by the way. Back yeah, he day. is. He's been around for a long time. Yep. That speed, obviously useful in all the matchups. I think of him as like a... Uh, he's half Korean, by the way. He's Korean yes. Canadian. Um, but he, he very similar to a live. Yeah. Drops constantly out on the map. Um, if it's not a drop, then they are foot slogs stimming it across the map because they want to get at you as fast as they can. And it's just relentless aggression. Yeah. Um, just to the point where the player crumbles under it. Yes. It's, it's too much. Speed matters. It's really fun for us, though. Oh, yes. That's why it's phenomenal to watch. And a TBT in particular, especially seeing Bunny sort of very marine heavy, although I don't know if he'll decide to do that in a TBT, we could yeah. see some pretty cool drop versus drop, micro versus micro battles with stem marines. Now, in terms of the bills, we're seeing the factory out pretty early here for Marsa. Bunny also following that up, but good, you know, 25 seconds difference. You know, Marsa got his out much, much quicker. Yeah, and as a consequence, does not have his orbital started. So, yep. I mean, th this is that Illuminati agreement I was talking about. It's just, they always do this. One of the guys is like, I'm going to go macro. The other one's like, there, you fool. I'm going to go attack into macro. Yep. And it always works out this way. Starport nice and quickly. Ooh, Hellion coming up. Reaper, Hellion Medivac. That would be a classic. Yeah. Might it's aggressive. It. Mm. It was above the ramp there, and it, I mean, good Reaper control, so he is going to be able to get out of here. Presumably, as I say that, he stops. Cyclone. Yep. Oh, two HP on that Reaper. That is rough. Gets out though. Not too bad. No. Are they going to delay this some more? I think so. Looking for it. Gets that immediately. Lovely little pick off there by Marsa. Kind of surprising to see Bunny go low ground on this, actually. Yeah. And he's it's costing him. Uh, Ooh. It's costing him here. I don't know. I think a lot of Terrans do. I'm not. I, I, I'm trying to think in my head why they would do that necessarily, because it feels like it is Reaper versus Cyclone slash Reaper. You know, fighting a lot. I mean, you could argue that it's like, well, the pawns got Reapers and get up a cliff anyway. It doesn't matter, but. You know, the Holy foot cow. further up the front, it goes. Oh, yeah. Cyclone DBS against uh, buildings, by the way, against that hardened material like doodads on the map is actually really high. Well, I'm saying, holy cow to this. It's a liberator coming off that star. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Uh, that is. Massa, which is really odd. weird. Yeah. That is a bit strange, isn't it? And there's a Viking on the way here for Bunny, so it's not a brilliant choice. It's scan, though. And yeah. that's a bold scan at this point in time. So Drops it down Raven. 16 orbitals. Ha! Huh, this is weird. He starts Raven and Cloak, then cancels Cloak while the scan's there. So I think he, he is trying to fake out Bunny into believing it's Cloak Banshee. Yeah. Which it isn't, but... Yeah, a couple of mind games going on here and there. That Liberator is an odd choice. I, I think maybe it's... I was going to say it's a map-specific choice, but considering it just got intercepted and now it's dead, uh, it was not a good map-specific choice. Interesting choice to go back. Uh, oh, oh he get, he's going to get away with this? No, he's going to get intercepted. Sure. Hey, if he jukes it, I'll be super no. impressed. No. E no. Nope. Ain't happening. 
It's like I, I didn't you know see what? a way you could possibly done that. As I was that. saying, man, what a fool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Captain Hindsight. Well, I think a lot of people do, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, do take it and dive on a mineral line. But you know, when they do that, they probably don't get many kills. The player should be on top of it. They get like yeah. none or one or something like that. So. Also, cycling gun fixed up. Got himself that Raven. Not a massive investment for the Liberator, but definitely uh, not a loss you want, especially not in a mirror matchup like this. Yeah. Bunny playing surprisingly passively, considering what we've seen out of him over the last couple of games. Oh, they're coiling up, man. They're just like, they're little snakes, just getting ready to strike. Marines being added into the mix for Marsa. I was about to say this is still mostly mech, but Stim has started for Bunny. Here it goes. Three Vikings already, by the huh. way. Yeah. Good. That's a lot. Three Cyclones. Or no, two Cyclones and a tank is what that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, the tank of mass is so important, but if it doesn't siege right now... Uh, this is going to be a problem. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. there he goes. All right. Just in the nick Literally of time. Right and gets a good shot, but... Let's see what Cyclone DPS is and landed Viking DPS. Don't underestimate it. I've been yeah. preaching this for a long time. Look at how quickly they kill tanks. Isn't this it amazing? Just be over. It could very well be. There's the pull off the line. Cyclone needs to back off. Doesn't want to lose that for no reason. Doesn't want to lose the SCVs, but god damn. Well, this is a weird trade in terms of the fact that they both just lost a bunch of workers, but Bunny is marching on with landed vikings and marines the standard build for nothing at all oh my god he might he, he should actually lose the orbital oh no they're gonna fight no they got it they gotta fight it's unfortunate that he kind of yeah. went airborne oh lord tank needs to go airborne again oh master with the cheeky little auto turret drop he pushes it back damage wise well master took a bit of a pounding but as you said he saved oh, yeah. the orbital Saves the orbital, so he's got a shot, but so many SCVs went down. Yep, uh, that, that was tank, rough. Like you pointed out, man, the Vikings on low ground. Gatling guns got some armor piercing. Yep, they they hurt. I I, I was I, like, not that this actually counts for anything at all, but for a while I was when I ever I played TBT, I did just go Cyclone Viking, and just yeah get like the upgrade just land the vikings it's like look at how good this is look at how fast these things die this is actually kind of cool yeah they are they're really they're really nice then they're, they're oh, underused i think underused yep. that buff was pretty cool especially in that role yes it, it's always been a like okay we killed the cloth let's land and die. land the vikings there's a little bit of a meat shield but no that against armored targets they got buffed and their the damage they do against those is now pretty significant on the ground Yep. You still won't see a four Viking drop out of a medevac, though. You will not. This won't happen. Nope. But that would be a surprise. It's like, oh, there's a medevac oh, coming yeah. in. I bet it's full of oh Marines. Oh, there's a medevac coming in. I bet it's full of things that are very glad to not be there right now. Oh, look over the interception. Oh, don't go that way. No, 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 no. Whew. Rolling the dice on that one. He rolled twice. But just good reactions, too. Yeah, Pulls back. Quick. A lot of people would have lost that medevac. That he would. Yep. Good moves there by Bunny. Combat shield about to complete for him as well. He's basically transitioned out of that weird mech push into Marine Tank. The more standard. As you said, Master's yeah. still very much behind. Both still on two bases, though. And they're going to... This is going to be a problem. You know, they're starting to mine out. Starting That's to mine out. And they're especially bunny thinking about sharking around this is where it gets really scary this is where i feel like there's a lot of complaints in tbt because there was no intel there's no scan no scouting they're just like time to move out yep and both of them have the idea at the same time although bunny is just going pure mobile with it being mostly marines and then mass is going entire army because he was behind so it's yeah it's just like one of those weird things where this and you know what? We only watch these games, but they must practice and play every day, and this happens all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how annoying that would be? Money scan right here from Bunny. Or the Bunny scan. Manages to spot the whole army. Knows, hey, that's Master's army. He's out. Let's go. And that's exactly what Bunny does. He's going to run right up the ramp and just <laughs> murdered him. 
GG. What an impressive performance there by Bunny. He beats yeah. one of each race. He beats Nurcio, Classic, and Marsa. And he wasn't even supposed Not to bad. be here. <laughs> uh, wow. Can't complain. No, nah, you can't. Considering you weren't supposed to be here, you just walked away with $750 and hopefully a lot more respect from a lot of people. And rightfully so, he earned it. Absolutely did. Well, well. What an odd tournament. <laughs> you said that in the voice of someone that, that experienced an odd tournament. You're like, what an odd tournament. How, how, how bizarre, how bizarre. We always have good games, though. It's just that this was the variety of like we set a cool record with nurcio uh neeb showed showed a good game at least that was mm -hmm. really impressive and then um and then it went downhill from there but that too was interesting <laughs> yeah we, we did have some a few bad games let's let's be entirely honest about stats, that. stats best protoss on earth gave us a very greedy build and then was punished hard by Nurcio. Like yep. it was, that's pretty disappointing. And yeah. how many times, by the way, what's funny, not to make this too big of a deal, but like how many foreigner games have we seen where the Protoss is getting bopped by some Korean Zerg and we're just like, man, those Korean Zergs, they just have this killer instinct. They know when to pull the trigger and those dumb foreigner Protosses, ugh. Yep, it is a strange reversal of fortune. Nurcio is just at home in this tournament. No wonder he likes it. He gets regular paychecks from it. But we got no complaints. He's always showing good games. So congratulations to him for an excellent performance. Big, big up to Alive as well, you know? It was like a seven-win yeah. streak before he was eventually taken down. So I feel like that's a hopeful sign of good things to come for Alive. Uh, I feel sorry for Sue. I can't help yeah. but feel sorry for Sue. You come home after losing the GSL finals, then you lose to Nurcio and Zerg versus Zerg. Oh. Well, sleep it off. We'll see him next GSL. <laughs> you know? That we will. It's like he can go and cry into the $10,000 worth of winnings or whatever that he walks away from the GSL with. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, it sure was a tournament. Of all the tournaments we've had, that was one of them. That was one of them. It was. That I can guarantee. No dishonesty <laughs> here. We're going to do a rerun, by the way, for anyone who missed anything. Gonna do a vodcast, as they're called on Twitch, so it'll take oh, okay. about 10 minutes, but we'll rerun the whole thing. So if you're late and it's like, ah, damn, I missed the event, don't worry. You can enjoy the live experience once again. Big shout outs and thank you. Well, firstly, of course, to In Control. Go to bed. What the hell's wrong yeah, with you? I'm sorry, I won't do that again. I I saw a movie late last night and I was like, you know what? GSL's on, and then that, that should be fine. I did okay, but in the last hour or so, I, I definitely was a zombie. Yep. Big thanks to all of the players, of course. Uh, particular congratulations to two people. Nurture, of course, for breaking the record for a number of wins, surpassing innovation. And to Bunny for a bit of a weird one. He has now ended the tournament. He's the first player to end the tournament as king twice. Oh, oh. really? Only yep. twice? Only twice. Yep. Uh, no one oh. else has done that. He is hoping he is not the first player to lose immediately next month twice because he is oh, one of yeah. only two players to have lost once. So that's a little bit rough. So thank you to all of the players. Thank you to our partner casting teams. We had streams for Germany, France, Poland, Russia, and China, I believe. And of course, big thanks to Crank for our Korean stream. Thanks to Olivia for all of their management and managing the social media feeds. Thanks to all of you for tuning in and watching. Much appreciated. We are uh, back on hopefully a regular schedule. So I would expect another Shoutcraft Kings next month. I would expect it to be interesting. I can't guarantee it will be good, but interesting. It will be that. It'll be a thing. Yep. Big thanks, of course, to all of our new subscribers on the Twitch channel as well. That is always appreciated. And last but by no means least, thank you to Blizzard Entertainment for sponsoring, providing the prize pool and payments for Shoutcraft Kings. Congratulations to our reigning King of the Hill once again, Bunny, who will defend his championship next month once we schedule in our July show. We're done. Thank you very much for watching, folks. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.